morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to church on this special Sunday of celebration as we celebrate our Cub Scouts and our Boy Scouts and also the transfiguration of the Lord. I have several announcements to share with you today. First of all, looking at our week ahead, I'm going to highlight a few things. The Scouts have their blue and gold dinner after our morning worship. On Wednesday, we are beginning our Lenten season with a couple of things. You'll notice at 8.30 that we'll be having what's called a Lent walk and devotion. That will be some light walking in our gymnasium, kind of some exercise and a time of devotion to follow. In the evening at 7 o'clock, we'll have our Ash Wednesday service, which officially kicks off Lent. And we hope that you'll come and be part of that service. Two things for next Sunday, just to look ahead and remind folks. Nominations committee will be meeting right after worship next Sunday. Also, there'll be a vacation Bible school meeting right after worship as well. Those are two very important meetings. One last thing that I want to share with you. If you look on the opposite side of the paper where the announcements are listed, there's a nice note to the congregation from our United Methodist Women. What we want to do is we would like to begin today a fundraiser so that we can replace the carpet in our parlor, which is the original carpet when the building was first built. It's probably long past due. It tends to be used quite frequently, so we're going to remove the carpet and put down a laminate flooring. And we've already picked out the style and a, a durable grade. And we are beginning today to solicit funding for that. If you would like to give towards that project, please know that you are welcome to do so. We would like to replace it again so that we don't have to worry so much about stains and wear and tear. And if you're able to give towards that, that would be wonderful. Are there any other announcements that you would like to share today or any questions for clarification? I invite you to stand and turn to someone and wish them a good morning. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Will you please will you please join me in the Scout Oath? On my honor, 
I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. You may be seated. and serve the Lord with gladness. We come, we come into his presence with a melody in our hearts. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Please remain standing as we turn our hymnals to number 139, Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
God, your will is that all your children should grow into fullness of life. We lift to you the ministry of scouting. We offer that you thanks for camping, to teach us that the world is our great home for study and work to build character, for service, to see our responsibility to those in need, for encouragement and genuine patriotism and vital faith. Bless the work of scouting in this place and around the world that through its efforts, the young may, like our Lord, increase in wisdom and in stature and in favor with you and all people. Amen. Come to a high and holy moment in the life of our church as we celebrate church membership. I would like to invite our lay leader, Katie Kearns, to come and join me here in front of our church as we do our liturgy together and welcome new members into our midst. Through profession of faith and the vows of church membership, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. On behalf of the church, I present Chris Wood of Profession of Faith. As a member of the clergy, Chris's membership is in the Baltimore Washington Annual Conference. Chris has been granted affiliate membership in the West Virginia Annual Conference. We celebrate this relationship with our annual conference and the resulting relationship with First United Methodist Church. On behalf of the church, I present Lisa Wood for Profession of Faith and Church Membership. Lisa comes to us today by letter of transfer from the Westminster United Methodist Church in Westminster, Maryland. I ask each of you, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord. If so, reply, I do. Will each of you, as members of Christ's universal church, be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries, if so reply, I will. Chris, as an affiliate member of this annual conference, and Lisa, as a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in this church's ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness, if so reply, I will. Church, I commend these folks to your love and care. Will you do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love? 
If so, reply, we will. We will. Let us pray. God of all grace, we thank you for Chris and Lisa, for their faithful attendance, and now for the celebration of affiliate and church membership. Strengthen all of us in the power of the Holy Spirit that we may live in grace and peace with each other, and most importantly, in loyalty to you, our great God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's show our appreciation this morning. continue our worship as we invite our children to come forward for today's children's message. Good morning. How are you all today? Good. We have lots of Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts with us today, don't we? Yes, we are happy to have you all here. I have a question. How can you tell that all these people sprinkled through here are Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts? What's an easy way to tell? By their uniforms. Can you share with me something about your uniform? Maybe what something means or a patch or anything? Uh, the neckerchief, uh, it tells which um, level we are on. Okay, so it tells which level you're on. Very good, thank you for sharing, Andrew. So that's an easy way to tell that you're in the Boy Scouts or the Cub Scouts, and that's a group that you belong to. And I'm sure you all have lots of friends in your group, and you get to do similar activities together. So what are some ways that you can tell that somebody is a Christian? This question's a little bit trickier. Does anybody have any ideas? <laughs> do Christians wear a uniform? Do we come on Sunday and I got my dress pants on and my dress shirt? Does that mean I'm a Christian? No, maybe. Kinda. <laughs> so, with the Boy Scouts, you can easily tell by the uniform. But Christians don't have uniforms. And there's not a real visible way to tell like Miss Lisa and Mr. Chris they joined our church this morning we didn't give them a uniform or a, or a badge or anything like that so they might go to Walmart afterwards and nobody would look at them and say oh look at that jacket he must be a Christian no so there's a song that sometimes we'll sing it in church on Sundays and it says that they will know we are Christians by our love. So people will recognize you if you follow Jesus and if you show people love and kindness, they recognize your actions. And they say, something's different about them. They must follow that Jesus guy. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So if you all bow your heads, we'll pray together. Dear God, help us to follow Jesus and help us to love everyone we meet. 
Amen. And everyone is welcome to come upstairs to Children's Church if they would like to. We might need a few extra volunteers in the back this morning. It's a good day when the kids are looking for a place to sit on the platform when there's not quite enough space. Wonderful to see all of the children today. We are all God's children, loved by God, and we celebrate that this morning. I want to share with you some concerns and some joys in our church. Just a, a few updates as far as concerns and some new ones. First of all, Ashton Burdine's father, Bob Burdine, had valve replacement surgery Friday at Ruby Memorial, as well as two stents put in and is doing well. And we lift him up in prayer for continued health and healing. Prayers for the Griffith family. The Griffith family, of course, the gentleman that was lost in the mine accident this last week. It just so happens that Sarah Ware's teaching assistant is the spouse of this gentleman who passed away. So we lift up the Griffiths in our prayers. Also lift up the Pizzino family. Mike and Carol are, as we speak, in Beckley for the funeral of his mother who passed away this last Tuesday morning. So we remember them today and pray for their peace. Also prayers for Betty Schaefer, Paula Dewar's sister, who did have a second hip replacement and the second operation is doing much better than the first and we're glad about that. Patterson family and their loss, also prayers for Beverly Price who's fighting cancer. In addition, we want to lift up Sarah and Ross Ware. Sarah gave birth on Friday to a new baby boy named Leo Ross who weighed in at 2.9 but is now 2.5 which is normal. 15 inches long and as handsome as can be. So please be praying for Sarah and Ross and little Leo. As Leo has some growing to do, but he is doing very well. Had to have a little bit of breathing assistance at first, but is now off of that and doing great. Also prayers for Jim Crowley. I think I saw Jim here today. Jim was in the hospital with some chest pains and ran some tests and everything checked out. A few more tests on the road, but we're glad to see you today, Jim. God bless you. I want to lift up Janice and Basil Hensley today. I stopped to see both Janice and Basil on Friday, and Basil shared with me that Janice is down to one insure a day, and it's really growing weaker, but I couldn't help but notice the pleasant smile she maintains on her face. What a wonderful lady. I know that they're concerned about her health and how long she may be with us, so we lift her up, as well as Basil and all the family. God bless you all, and we thank of you often and be praying for you. Are there any other requests, updates, or joys that you might like to share today? Yes. Okay. So let me grab my pen, which kind of eluded me. There we go. Add your parents to our prayer list today. Thank you. Any others today? Yes. John Young family and the loss of Judy. Pardon me. June. June Young. Thank you. And I think I saw another hand. Yes. Okay. Do we have a day on the surgery yet? Thursday. Okay. So prayers. Okay. Uh, 
89 for Dick. Happy birthday to Dick from all of us. Yes, I, I'm used to you being over here, Barb, so I had to really do a, a switch. <laughs> and Ed surgery scheduled for this Thursday and a stress test as well. Thank you. Did I see another hand over this way? Any other hands today? Joy or concern? Yes. Chris's sister Patty having surgery at Mon General Tuesday. Thank you, Chris. Any others today? How many of you were tickled about the Seattle Seahawks winning the Super Bowl? Just curious. Just lift up a hand there. <laughs> wow, that went over real well. <laughs> How many of you were disappointed that the Patriots didn't win? Well, there's a few. How many of you really don't care at all about either team? <laughs> well, Gary Crawford at first service wore his Eagles jersey again two weeks in a row. But I, I encouraged him to do that because it was an amazing game. And I did put on a green tie in honor of Gary, just in case you're wondering why it's green. But I think one of the storylines that has come out of the Super Bowl is that Nick Foles, the backup quarterback, almost quit a year ago. Matter of fact, scouts, he went camping. And he decided, thanks to some conversation with his brother-in-law, that he would give it another shot. He could have never dreamt at that time where that would have led him. And what an incredible story. I understand that Nick is actually taking classes online to be a pastor through Liberty University. His other goal in life is to be a pastor of a high school campus, private high school. And we applaud that, that effort. God works in wonderful and mysterious and great ways. Amen, church? Amen. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray together? Lord, we adore you for your presence, not only in this place, but your presence in our lives that constantly watches over us day and night. Your word says that you never sleep nor slumber. It's hard for us to imagine such an attribute. You are fully awake 24-7. You are in our today. You're in our yesterday. You're in our tomorrow. And that strikes us in a profound way. We praise you, we adore you for your protective grace. Lord, we ask you that you would inform, inform our speech because sometimes we are too quick to say something and other times we are too slow to say something. Help us to know the difference between what's necessary to be said and when silence is a better choice. Give us the ability to speak words of encouragement more often than words of criticism. And when we feel a need to be critical, may it only be done in love and genuine concern. So we pray that you would, would bless our speech, not only as a church, but as a people. Lord God, we lift up to you those names that we have mentioned, names on our list and some new names. We also pause now as we add to these requests many more quiet requests, maybe unspoken requests that no one else knows except you and the person making the request. So we reflect upon those needs as we quietly mention them to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Guide us as we continue our worship. We thank you for 
our scouts, Cubs and Boy Scouts, and now as we add Girl Scouts to the mix. And we praise you for leadership and ask that you would guide and direct and protect this wonderful, beautiful ministry. We give you blessing and praise as we share together that prayer that you taught your disciples of all ages to pray when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before we go to our time of offering, I would like to ask two of our adult scout leaders to share just a moment with you to tell you about some of the exciting and wonderful things that are going on here at First Church and beyond. So we have both John DeBacco and Scott Harris, I think, that would like to share. Whichever one would like to go first, that'd be great. All right, Scott, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Just wanted to tell you a little bit about PAC 88. I'm a DIN leader for DIN 1. Hollis Lipscomb is here somewhere. He's the PAC leader. He's in the back. So just a quick rundown. We have about 55 boys in the pack right now or so, so pretty good numbers. That's K through fifth grade. Um, Cub Scouts recently started... It's called Lions, and so that's the little guys. Um, then we have Tigers, Wolf, Bears, Weeblows, and Weeblows 2. Um, this afternoon we actually have our Blue and Gold Banquet. So we have one Weeblows 2 that's going to move into the troop and become a Boy Scout. So that's exciting. A um, few things we've done. Of course, a lot of you know about day camp. It's camp Mahonigan last summer. That's always a big hit. Uh, we have the Pinewood Derby coming up here in about a month. So we'll be racing here soon. Um, Christmas time, we did a cake auction, had a really good success with that, had a lot of fun. We participated in a Cub Adventure weekend, I think back in September at Camp Mahonigan, which is an overnight camp out. Um, we helped pack shoe boxes, that was fun. Some of our dens have been collecting books for Davis Medical Center, it's a good project. Several of them have been out to the DNR and learned lots of good things. I know one of the dens did some cookie decorating at Christmas time. Um, of course, you remember, well, the Boy Scouts helped with the Veterans Day here and some of the Cubs with that. We had our popcorn sale, did, did very well with that. We've had some guys go to a Dini basketball game. Uh, one thing that was really fun last summer, if you remember, the, there was a troop that went to the Jamboree. I forget where they're from, Charlie. Do you remember? New York. We had an ice cream social with them downtown. And the Boy Scouts did dinner and the Cubs went down and had ice cream. Really good um, social and get to meet some guys from New York. They did some service work here in town, so that was really good. Um, we had a family camp out at Camp Mahonigan, just, just Pack 88 back in October. That was a lot of fun. So the pack's really strong right now. I think we're doing good. Like I said, we have about 55 or so. I think we're having a good time. We've got some good leaders. Um, we saw a lot of the guys here today. So thank you for the church for your support, and hopefully we'll keep going. My name is John DeBacco, and I'm the Scoutmaster for Troop 88. Um, we've been busy as well. Uh, last summer, we went to summer camp in Pennsylvania and represented the troop well. Um, we built a canoe out of uh, cardboard and duct tape and placed well in that, and also won the entryway competition where Isaac Wetzel um, lashed together a really nice entryway to our campsite. Uh, some other activities we've done since then, we went to Green Bank to earn the Astronomy Merit Badge. Um, it was a great opportunity. The boys uh, went and not only learned about astronomy, but they learned how to operate the 40-foot radio telescope. And we thought that would sort of be just the introduction to it, but they turned us loose on it at night with no instructors there. And it was our job to look for um, hydrogen out in the Milky Way galaxy, and we believe we found it. Uh, the boys were hoping for alien life, but we, I don't think we found it. 
Um, we've been on s several camping trips since then, too. Um, most recently, the Klondike Derby, which was at the end of January. There were 16 patrols there, and Troop 88 fielded two patrols. We had 15 boys go, and out of the 16 patrols, our boys placed first and third. Um, so we brought the, the title back home to Troop 88. We have a nice little trophy down there that we get to keep for a year. We've had numerous Eagle Scouts um, recently, including Micah Tony, Nick Haynes, and Hayden Long, who have done projects such as picnic tables around town, and most recently, Andrew Guire, who did a lot of work uh, re repairing and restoring structures at the Kingsville Cemetery. Uh, we have boys working on the swimming merit badge with Mr. Warner, and also working on the citizenship and the world merit badge with Ms. Guire, um, amongst other achievements. And lots of boys ranking up, and lots right on the verge of Eagle Scout, and we're still uh, very proud of the number of Eagle Scouts that we're able to produce from the troop. So we really appreciate the church's support. Um, they've always been very good to us, and we look forward to continuing this relationship. Thank you. As you can see, there are wonderful things happening. I, I would like to ask if you're an adult leader or a Cub Scout or Boy Scout, would you stand for a moment wherever you might be seated? Would you please stand so that we could recognize you? And before we have some applause, if you are at another troop rather than ours, please feel free to stand as well. If you were ever a Scout, Boy Scout or Girl Scout, would you mind standing in addition to these fine folks? And let's give everybody a round of applause. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. And now we move to the time in our service when we dedicate our tithes and offerings to God. Our scouts will be assisting us. Let's continue our worship together. faith it takes to step out of this boat I'm in, onto the crashing waves, to step out of my comfort zone, into the realm of the unknown where Jesus is, and he's holding out his hand, but the waves are calling out my name and they laugh at me, reminding me of all the times I've tried before I failed. The waves that keep on telling me time and time again, boy, you'll never win. You'll never win. But the voice of truth tells me a different story. The voice of truth says, do not be afraid. And the voice of truth says, this is for my glory. Out of 
all the voices calling out to me. I will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth. Oh, what I would do to have the kind of strength it takes to stand before a giant with just a sling and a stone surrounded by the sound of a thousand warriors shaking in their armor wishing they had had the strength to stand but the giant's calling out my name and he laughs at me Reminded me of all the times I've tried before and failed. The giant keeps on telling me time and time again, boy, you'll never win. You'll never win. But the voice of truth tells me a different story. The voice of truth says do not be afraid. And the voice of truth says this is for my glory. Out of all the voices calling out to me. I will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth. But the stone was just put the giant on the ground. Ways they don't seem so high on top of them looking down. I will soar with the wings of eagles when I stop and listen to the sound of Jesus singing over me. But the voice of truth tells me a different story. The voice of truth says do not be afraid. And the voice of truth says this is for my glory. Out of all the voices calling out to me, I will choose to listen and believe. I will choose to listen and believe. The voice of truth. I will listen and believe. I will listen and believe the voice of truth. Please bow your heads with me. Yes, Lord, help us to always be on the side of truth. And may your truth spread throughout this community and beyond, thanks to cheerful and giving hearts. We dedicate these tithes and offerings to your holy name. In Christ we pray. Amen. You may be seated. It is my pleasure to introduce our guest preacher today. 
Mikey, Michael DeBacco is 16 years of age and a junior at Elkins High School. He is a life scout and only a single project away from making Eagle. Some of the things that Michael likes to do is, of course, camp, as you might imagine, writing, and playing soccer. You will actually hear his gift of writing come out in his message for today. Michael has one younger brother in eighth grade, also a scout, and is the son of parents Aaron and John DeBacco. It is my pleasure to invite Michael to our pulpit this morning. Michael, come and join us. So I'd just like to begin with a quick reading from Psalms. Then Elihu answered and said, Do you think it is right to say, I am in the right, not God? When you ask what it profits you, what advantage do I have from not sinning? I have words for reply to you, and your friends as well. Look up to the skies and see. Behold the heavens high above you. If you sin, what do you do to God? Even if your offenses are many, how do you affect him? If you are righteous, what do you give him, or what does he receive from your hand? Your wickedness affects only someone like yourself, and your justice only a fellow human being. In great oppression, people cry out. They call for help because of the power of the great. No one says, where is God, my maker, who gives songs in the night, teaches us more than the beasts of the earth, and makes us wiser than the birds of the heavens? Though thus they cry out, He does not answer because of the pride of the wicked. So a few weekends ago, we attended an annual event called the Klondike Derby. Troops from all around North Central West Virginia converge on a small camp outside of Buchanan to compete in a series of challenges that test both scout skills and teamwork. These include activities like fire building, knot tying, relay races, and around a dozen other scored stations with prizes being awarded at the end of the day. For me, the most memorable part of the day came as the evening wound down. We sat around the campfire, telling jokes as we struggled to keep warm. Our teeth chattered as the sun fell and night set in, but the spirit that inhabited that group was something special. It was as if all the world was contained within that semicircle of freezing teenagers, groaning at the delivery of yet another bad punchline. Afterward, we retreated inside the camp dining hall, where we could shed our outermost layers for a couple of hours before enduring yet another sleepless night. We played board games whose sole objective, it seemed, was for the younger scouts to gang up against me with no regard for who would win so long as he didn't sit in my chair. (laughs) Though I murmured numerous hollow threats of revenge, I was having a blast, as well as everyone else at the table. The next day, we awoke and prepared to pack our things for home. The weather had been unexpectedly warm that night, a blessing for the end of January, or so it appeared until we had time to survey the results of the night's downpour. Our tents were soaked. Some of our younger boys, who were not yet knowledgeable in the essential nature of multiple tarps and other forms of separation from the seeping wet ground, had had a standing half inch of water on their floors. Dry clothes were out of the question. We trudged through the mud hole that had been our site, When we were ready, we sped out in the hopes of warm homes, showers, and beds. When we returned, we settled back into our normal habits, engaging in the diversions of the modern world. It's hard for certain things not to be considered mundane after a weekend like that. Our goal as scouts, our responsibility as the faithful, is to kindle that spark of the divine, to play witness to the beautiful moments that God renders before us, and to act in a way that not only exhibits our longing for the eternal, but our appreciation for temporal miracles. As a troop, we are blessed to have such a rewarding relationship with your parish. Not only do you provide us with a meeting place, but also a partner in our endeavor to turn young men into adults instilled with a strong morality. Our coordination on service projects helps our boys see the joy inherent in the the assistance of others. Many of the values of scouting in the church align. We try to create a world in which virtue reigns over vice. We seek to fulfill our potential as conscience beings, striving to be lights under the darkness. We hope to see our concepts of righteousness reach fruition 
through the change that we bring about in our surroundings and extend a helping hand to those less, less fortunate than ourselves. It seems as if the course of all modern life veers towards the future without apt consideration of the present. We become lost in our digital domains, concerned more with the image of ourselves that we project to others than the well-being of our emotional and physical and spiritual state. We become so concerned with the minutiae of the modern world that we don't always play witness to the testaments to the divine that occur on the daily in all facets of our lives. It used to be somewhat commonplace to seek God in the wilderness through extended hermitages. Now, I'm not suggesting anything so radical as to go curl up in a cave for a few months, but it isn't difficult to see the value of the practice. It is my firm belief that God speaks through birdsong. With all that occurs in our hectic lives, these signs sometimes become lost in the white noise. We must make our hearts like the placid waters of a pond, so that when God creates a ripple on its surface, we can detect his presence. When we let ourselves become enraptured by the beauty that surrounds us, we begin to detect, detect eternity. When we consciously observe the forest, the changing of seasons, the cycles of nature, our concerns appear paltry in comparison. Remnants of Eden go unnoticed when we become absorbed in our own artifice. Each sunrise is an isolated miracle. How can one claim that this life is meaningless when they consider the blessing with which we have been endowed? To explore and decipher the cosmos, finding God in the trivial and the infinite. We see the harmony of natural laws, the divinity that lies in the interwoven fabric of the universe. Einstein is quoted as saying, a knowledge of the existence of something that we cannot penetrate, of the manifestations of the profoundest reason and the most radiant beauty, it is this knowledge and this emotion that constitute the truly religious attitude. We live in the most wonderful of testing grounds, rife with reflections of heaven. It is our duty as the faithful to approach to ourselves be mirrors of the divine, allowing others to witness God through our actions and speech. We can do this through our emulation of Jesus and the promotion of his virtue. We must create a fertile soil in which the seeds of belief and goodwill can grow. We must tend the crops through our continued commitment to the precepts of the church. To, to promote this wonder in others should be our goal. We can do this through a variety of media, including the utilization of our time and talents. When we look upon a great painting, a well-constructed product, or the joy of our relationships to both family and friends, we can't help but sense the spiritual. For if God speaks through bird songs, and he smiles to the child. While we must prepare ourselves for that time when we pass over into life eternal, we must not ignore the eternal that inhabits this life, the images of God that are plastered on the ordinary, and the chance that we have been given to experience it all. We must make this world as close an impression of heaven as possible, letting the light of God shine through in all things that we do. We must remain vigilant for his signs, occurring at all hours of the day. Our faith is founded on belief without sight, but if we are willing to play witness to the divinity of our world, this isn't nearly as necessary as we might have supposed. I'll conclude with a series of excerpts from a poem by William Blake titled Auguries of Innocence. To see a world in a grain of sand, in a heaven in a wild flower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand, an eternity in an hour. A robin red breast in a cage puts all heaven in a rage. He who mocks the infant's faith shall be mocked in age and death. He who shall teach the child to doubt, the rotting grave shall near get out. He who respects the infant's faith triumphs over hell and death. The child's toy and the old man's reasons are the fruit of two different seasons. Thank you. I shared with first service that when I gave my first sermon, I was 20 years old, and it wasn't even close to the quality of Michael's sermon today. Wonderful job. And let me just say this. That's a wise young man, wouldn't you say? And one of the things that he said, and he said many things well, but what a different place it would be if we tried to make earth more like heaven. Thanks for that. We needed that today. I invite you, my friends, to turn in your hymnals to the song America and let us stand and sing together.
with the likes of young boys and men in our troop and pack. Praise the Lord. I want to invite Michael to join me in the receiving line at the end. And Scouts, if you could do just like you're doing now, kind of fan out along the back wall, maybe some folks would like to come up and say hi to you as well. Now, if you would, receive this benediction. Oh God, ignite within us the spark of the divine. Pour out your Holy Spirit, not only to protect us, but to guide and direct us. May we live to honor Jesus Christ in all we say and do, for it's in his name we pray. Amen.